In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Roblox UGC item. And for this, you're going to need two softwares, Roblox Studio and Blender. If you don't have Blender, you can come to blender.org. I'll link it in the description and come here and you can download it by just clicking the download button here or coming up here and clicking download. But anyway, let's get started. So we're going to want to go to start with Roblox Studio here. And all we really need this for is getting our dummy. So we're going to go over here to the avatar tab, click on it and then click rig builder. And then once you click on it, it should come up with this, this little UI, generate rig. And you can pick any of them. You can import your avatar, or I usually just do block, the block avatar. And you get a nice block rig. I'm in the middle of Wales with no internet right now, so there is literally no rig. I don't know why it's not appearing. Yeah, this rig is just not going to load. I've got this example here that I've just built. Just pretend this is your block rig. I would suggest using a real block rig, but I'm going to have to use this one here. And basically what you want to do is you want to go to the position over here and type... 0, 0, 0. And I'm just going to delete the spawn pad here for clarity. And as you'll see, this will put him in the middle. This will just make it so much easier in Blender. So if you see here, I click on him. And over in the Explorer now, you'll see it should say rig. But mine just says model because it's just a Roblox model. You want to right click on it and then come down to export selection. And then save this dummy in your files somewhere where you'll remember. Because we need to put this into Blender now so that we can model our accessory around it. Okay, now we want to come over to Blender. I'm just going to highlight everything and press delete. If you don't know the base basics of blender i will suggest you watch my video on the basics of blender i'll put a tag right now on screen and i'll also link it in the top of the description just under the blender download link so that you guys who don't know how to use blender can learn because you need to know the basics before you follow this but anyway let's get started here we're going to do file import and then we're going to do wave front obj this is the file format roblox exports to so click on that and i actually have a dummy in my files here so um you, this is my real dummy you want to make sure that you've got two files the mtl and the obj but you don't want to actually import the mtl the mtl is attached to the obj so click on the obj and then do import obj and as you'll see here my dummy is now imported i'm going to quickly change some stuff up before we start modeling i'm going to show you guys what i'm going to do i personally think blender looks a lot better when you have the viewport shading settings shifted a bit so if you come over here to the top right corner and click this little drop down arrow you can see all these settings i'm going to change mine to flat i'm going to turn on shadow and cavity i'm going to change screen to both and then just kind of like shift these numbers a bit and i'm also going to turn on texture and what this does is it actually turns on pass through so i can actually see where the face on the dummy is and stuff like that but yeah let's get started with our accessory now and what we're going to make is a bowler hat it's just like a simple sort of top hat like hat but it's a bit more round so let's get started here so what we're going to do is where we're going to start by doing shift a to add a mesh go to mesh and then we are going to go to cylinder and now you've imported the cylinder it should be down here and you want to go to the bottom left corner where it says add cylinder click on that and it'll pop out this menu and you want to change your vertices count i'm going to change mine to about 14 I think 14 is a good number to have. So I think 14 is what we're going to do here. And as you see now, this thing is now different. So you can see if we change the number here, it adds like more edges. So I think 14 is probably the best shout, but you can go a bit higher or a bit lower. But what we're going to do here is we're now going to do G to move this and Z to lock it onto that Z axis. And it should go to about here. Also, for you Americans, sometimes people comment saying, what's Z? Z is Z. It's like the key on your keyboard, the little zigzag. But anyway, let's keep going here. So what we want to do now is we're going to go into the orthographic front view. So to do this, there are two ways. You can either press the number one key on your number pad, not the normal one key, the number pad. But some keyboards don't have a number pad. So if you want to do this without the number pad, just come over to the top right corner here. And where it has these little like letters you can click on you basically want to just click on them so for here we want to be on the y-axis the green one so click either y or y minus and it'll put you in the front view so this is how you can do it without a number pad but the number pad makes it a bit clicker by quick bit quicker by pressing one three or seven but yeah we're going to press number one here and now that we're in the front view we are going to go and move this up a bit so i think what we're going to do is we're going to do z to go into wireframe and now that we're in wireframe we can actually see where our head is and i'm going to press s to scale i'm going to scale this down so that it kind of just goes a little bit bigger than the head and then i think that is good now that we've got this thing more or less scaled to the size of our head, we're going to want to start really getting some more shape and making this actually like a hat. And we can't really do this in object mode, so we're going to go and do this in edit mode. To go into edit mode, make sure you have your cylinder selected, so it has the outline around it. And you can either go over here where it says object mode, click and do edit mode, 
Or if you like this, you can just go fast and press the tab key on your keyboard by tab, tab in, tab out. There we go. So what we're going to do is here, we are going to um, do Alt A to deselect everything. So everything's gone, like all the dots, all the vertices are black. And we're going to go back into the front view. So I'm going to press number one key on my number pad. And we're going to press Z again to go into wireframe. And what we're going to do here is a quick way to select all these vertices on the bottom. You can either use the box select tool up here and like highlight everything. Or you can click one and then hold the shift key and select them all. Or a quicker way, you can hold alt and click on the line and it will select the whole loop. So whichever way you want, we're going to go back to the front view here. I'm going to do G to move this loop and Z. And we're going to move it somewhere around here, just before where the head starts to curve. And now what we want to do is we're going to select this other loop. So I'm just going to highlight this and then do G and Z again to move it down to just above the head, somewhere like that. And now what we want to do is here, we want to make this rounder. We want to make this rounder to kind of create that bowl hat look. So to do this, we are wanting to have this loop selected. Um, so as we do, have it selected and do Control B. Control B bevels. And what the bevel does is it kind of gives it that round look. And if you want to give it a more round look like this, you have to just scroll. So if you scroll backwards, it removes loops. If you scroll forwards, it adds loops. Now I'm going to go something like this i think that should be good we're going to press number one to go back into front view here and i actually don't like how this looks i'm going to control z and uh, undo that and i'm going to move this back up a bit higher so i think if i do g and z to move this a bit higher something like that and then do s to scale i'm going to scale this down to add a bit of um a round look already and now i'm going to do control b again and i'm going to try and yeah really get that nice round look I think something like that will do. And as you see, this is starting to look a little bit more round. I actually think I'm going to move this loop up a bit. I'm going to move this up a bit and then scale it in. So what I did there was I just selected this loop, G to move, Z to move on the Z axis, and then just press S to scale. And we're going to highlight everything here and just move it down a bit just so there's no clipping and there we go we've got the base done now we're going to press tab again to go into edit mode and up here in the top left corner there's this little dot the line and the square the dot is vertex selection mode the line is edge selection mode and the the square is face selection mode select the square the face selection mode and we're going to select this face that's just showing here you can always hide your dummy so go to object mode and hide the dummy and then here you'll see that we can select this face and then press delete and then delete faces and that will delete that face and now that is gone that is what we want we're going to re-show the dummy here <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we are going to do alt and select this loop here and now we're going to do e to extrude and this basically adds another loop and we're going to do z to scale it on the z axis and keep it going down and now we're going to left click somewhere around there and now we're going to do s to scale this outwards and what we're doing is we're trying to create that kind of like curve like bowl hats kind of have this like curvy out a bit and that's what we're going to do now so now what we're going to do is we're going to do e to extrude again but this time we're going to right click and what right click does is it extrudes it still but it's just right inside of where the other initial selection was so you can see here if i press g to move it is still extruded right it just means that we've extruded it and reset it back to its initial location. So we do control Z here, and we're gonna press S to scale. And this will basically just scale it out a bit. And now we're gonna do E to extrude again, and Z to move it up a bit. We wanna move it up about here, and then do S to scale this outwards. And now what we've got here is you've kind of got this round, nice rim. And I'm gonna show you here a, a couple tricks here, just to make it a bit easier, because we want this thing to be extremely clean. When we're done with it, we want like a nice mesh. So um, yeah, we don't want this thing to be this thin. Of course, we're gonna add some thickness, and we'll do that soon. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shade this smooth. To shade smooth, just go tab into edit mode, A to select everything, and then go up here to the top and do face, shade, smooth which is that down here. And then we want to go out of edit mode here and come down with this mesh selected, make sure it's selected and go over to the green triangle called object data properties and then scroll down to where it says normals. Open this tab and then tick auto smooth. And sometimes you have hard edges still. If you have hard edges like this, you can fix it by doing control R and hover over it, left click and right click and then like add some more depth and it'll change it. But one way you can change this easier without having to add any extra geometry is by just adjusting this angle. I usually go for 50 degrees. 50 degrees is just great for low poly modeling. And as you see, 
that has now caused it to kind of like smooth over. And also one thing you might see here, you might observe that there's a chance this happens to yours as well, where it's kind of like dark. You see that it's darker on this out bit, and that is due to the normals direction. The normals direction is basically each face on a model has a positive and a negative face. And what this means is the negative face is invisible in the game engine. The positive face is the only face you see. You can always use the uh, double-sided tool in Roblox Studio. Some of you might have used it. However, the problem with the double-sided tool is it basically doubles how many tries you've got and actual UGC items can't use double-sided. So how you fix this is you basically want to go and do tab into edit mode, A to select everything, and then do Alt N and recalculate outside. And sometimes that doesn't necessarily fix the problem. However, if you want to check if you've got the actual problem here, you might want to go over here to this little like two dots thing um, and click the down arrow and then change and tick face orientation and actually what's happened here is the whole thing the whole thing is negative faces and what red means is it means the negative faces so in the game the red faces are going to be invisible and as you see under you've got the blue faces so what we're going to do is we're going to set the hat here and do a and then we're going to do alt n and then flip and this will just flip everything and make sure you see no red faces and because this thing is actually only one face thick the bottom face is going to be red but we're going to fix that very shortly so you can tick off uh, face orientation here just so that we go back to normal and what we're going to do here is we're now going to add some thickness so to do this select your hat mesh uh, or your object and make sure you're in object mode here and come over to this little wrench this is the modifiers tab now we're going to go to add a modifier and add something called a solidify modifier and solidify what it does is it basically takes every face and kind of like adds an extrusion at a depth of your choice. Sometimes it can do it in like weird directions and there is a way to fix that I'll show you in a minute but you come here to the, the thickness and you can adjust it. So you can make it thicker or thinner. However, there's a few problems here where you can see like the hat kind of goes a bit weird. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do control with the hat selected, do control A and then just do rotation and scale. This basically just applies the transforms you've made and it'll help it be a little bit more normal. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna increase the thickness and make it as thick as you want. I think something like this is good. If we hide our dummy again over here, you can see this thing's looking good. And if we go and tick on face orientation, everything is blue, just as you like to see it. And now what you see is we've kind of got this nice hat shape. I'll be covering the eyes a bit. You can always select it and do G and Z to move it a bit above the eyes if that is what you fancy. And what we're going to do now is we are going to basically add a bit more detail here. So what we're going to do first is we are going to apply this solidify modifier. So to apply it, just come over to the modifier here, click the little down arrow and press apply. And now if we go into edit mode, you will see that all the vertices and stuff are there because we've applied it. And we're going to come back over here to the face select mode. This is just going to be an easy way to create a nice little ribbon around your hat. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the alt click selection method. So if we select, have our mouse over this line and hold alt and click it should select the whole way around. Same if you select this one, it'll select the whole way around on there. But we want this one here, we want this band just here, and this is where we're gonna extrude to create that kind of top hat band look. So to do this, we're gonna do hold Alt and E on our keyboard, and it comes up with a bunch of extrude options. Extrude faces is what you'd usually use. If you press E right now though, you'll see it doesn't really work. So what we're gonna do is we are going to use Alt and E, and then extrude faces along normals. And this will actually extrude every face out and you kind of like move your mouse and create a nice look and I think we'll go somewhere like that and as you see we've got this really cool looking ribbon along the edge of our hat and this will come through even more when we texture it. If you're really getting fancy you might want to add some more to this and I'm going to challenge those of you who want to go to that next level and challenge yourself try and add a little bow to the front here try and add a little bow to the front of your bowler hat and those of you who attempt this challenge join my discord server linked in the description and I want to see your attempts at this challenge show me in, your dis in the discord server and I'd love to see your attempts at making a bow however that's going to be it for this video for those of you who want to know how to texture this do not worry I have a video on how to texture UGCI items that will be on screen now click that video if you want to learn how to texture and yeah thank you for watching hopefully i'll see you in the next video